In this video, I'm going to show you how you can calculate price to earnings ratios in Microsoft Excel. Now, you can pull in price to earnings ratios, also known as PE ratios, from many investing websites. But the benefit of doing it yourself in Excel is that you don't have to wait for the data to get updated. And you can also do what if analysis to, to see what the PE ratio is going to look like based on what you expect back to company's earnings numbers to be. And I'm also gonna show you how you can calculate forward price to earnings ratios as well and how, how they differ from uh, normal price to earnings ratios which just look at a company's trailing earnings numbers. Now, before we jump in, if you're finding these tutorials and tips helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and make sure to enable notifications so you never miss another video. So for this example, I'm gonna use three tickers, Tesla, Nvidia, and Meta Platforms. So I'm gonna pull in their data and calculate what their PE ratios are. So the key things we're gonna need are the stock price. We're gonna need their earnings, share is outstanding, and that'll help us calculate the EPS, which will then be used to calculate the, the PE ratio. So the key ingredients we need because as the PE ratio implies, the P is the price, the E is the earnings. So we need to compare price against the earnings, but we need to put earnings in a per share basis. So we're comparing the price uh, price per share and the earnings per share. And so that way we can do a, a fair comparison as to what the price is per earnings. So here I've pulled up Tesla's financial data from Yahoo Finance. And when we're looking at the earnings numbers, we always want to look at the trailing 12 months or TTM. So this will tell us the earnings numbers over the past four quarters. You can enter the earnings numbers manually, but it's a lot easier just to go to a site like Yahoo Finance to pull in the earnings numbers um, because they've already got the trailing 12 month values in here. So here we've got diluted net income available to common stockholders. And this is in thousands. So I'm going to pull in 12743 for the earnings. And I can put in a stock price of about $255 right now for Tesla stock. And for the shares outstanding, we've got diluted average shares, 3491. So I want to make sure that, um, you know, if it's thousands, we're bringing in thousands and millions, then in millions and so on, just to make sure that we're calculating it properly. And then I'm going to take the earnings divided by the shares outstanding. So that EPS is 3.65. So now to calculate the PE multiple, we're going to take the stock price divided by that EPS. And that tells us Tesla's trading at around 69.85 times earnings. If we go to the statistics page, we can see trailing PE is about 66.5. So fairly close. So it could just be that uh, something hasn't uh, been updated. There could be some rounding issues, that sort of thing. But we're still in the in the ballpark. So I'll do this example for other stocks as well, just to just to show that the methodology is, is correct. So here we've got NVIDIA stock. Right now it's trading at about $139 a share. It's earnings over the tra trailing 12 months, 53.008. And then diluted average shares, 24.9, 24.900. So again, just round it off there. Take the earnings divided by shares outstanding. So EPS, and we can see diluted EPS, 2.13. I've got 2.12, so rounded about 2.13 as well. So now we can do the same thing. Take the stock price divided by that EPS and NVIDIA's PE multiple about 65.29. Uh, and so 63.83. So again, fairly close. And so it might just be slightly different data points that they're using in their, in their calculations. Next up, we've got Meta Platforms. So it's trading at around $569. The earnings over the trailing 12 months, 55,539. And diluted average shares, 26,23. Take the earnings divided by the shares. So EPS of 21.17. And for the PE multiple, we're taking the price divided by that EPS 26.87 and on the statistics we've got 26.46 so not a whole lot of difference between the value that we've got here so 
Um, what I'm going to do next is calculate the forward price to earnings um, ratios. So on Yahoo Finance, if you go under the analysis section, you, you'll get data on analyst estimates, how much profit they're expecting um, the stock to generate over, over the next year. So we've got the number of analysts covering it, the average estimate, the low, the high, and the year ago EPS. So this is the earnings estimate. This is what we want to look at. So we want to look at the average. So the average tells us for next year, Meta Platforms EPS is projected to be 25.18. So let's say future EPS is going to be 25.18. So that means our forward price to earnings multiple, that's going to be based on the stock price divided by that projection. So we can say Meta Platforms is trading at a forward PE of 22.6. So let's check that as well. And indeed, 4P of 22.6. So that's where that forward earnings multiple is coming from. It's looking at analyst projections. Let's go to NVIDIA as well. And under the analysis page, analysts are estimating, again, the average estimate right here is 4.06 for the next fiscal year. And if we take the stock price divided by that future earnings, we've got 34.23 and 34.84 so similar types of things so it just comes down to rounding there tesla let's check theirs for analyst estimates 3.26 for next year and let's take the stock price divided by that estimate we've got a 4 pe of 78. so this is what our data looks like we've got the stock prices here we've got our earnings numbers we've got our shares outstanding and our and our EPS um, numbers calculated. Those are really the two components you need, the earnings and the shares outstanding to get to the EPS. Once you've got EPS, you can calculate the PE multiple fairly easily, just need the stock price. So obviously that's gonna fluctuate along with the price. As for the forward PE, that's also gonna depend on the price, but it's also gonna depend on analyst estimates. So you may see different forward PE multiples based on different data sources and um, and things like that. So that's, that's just important to keep in mind. If you do see a different number, consider that, you know, consider the source and potentially that it's using data from a different place. And that can be a reason why some of those estimates are a bit different. Typically, um, when it comes to four PE multiples, it's gonna be the average estimate that's being used, but never a guarantee that um, you're pulling it from the same place. So that's how um, the process works as far as being able to calculate those numbers um, yourself and where they're coming from. Um, if you're using Google Sheets, the process is the same, but you can also use the Google Finance function to directly pull in that PE multiple as well from Google Finance. So there are easier ways to do this, but by, by knowing how to calculate this, you can make any sort of adjustments in your earnings expectations and your calculations to do a what if analysis to see what that multiple would look like under different scenarios. So if you found this video useful, please make sure to leave a like and thanks for watching.